बसमीम् अल्लाम माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू योर चैनल द एनाटॉमी कैनवास विच योर ट्यूटर डॉक्टर शैला अमान टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद दी हिस्टोलॉजी ऑफ गेस्ट्रो इंटस्टाइनल सिस्टम एंड इन दिस वी विल डिस्कस दी जनरल स्ट्रक्चरल प्लान ऑफ द एलिमेंट्री कैनल एंड दी इसोफिकस so general what is the general structural plan of the gastrointestinal system so basically it consist of the four layers of mucosa the submucosa muscularis externa and the serosa so this is the mucosa mucosa in turn consist of the epithelium beneath epithelium there is a lamina propria and the muscularis mucosae after this there is a layer of the moderately dense connective tissue called submucosa then there is muscularis externa and outer to muscularis externa is serosa or adventitia so detailed diagram you can appreciate the epithelium as well the glands associated with epithelium and mucosa and their ducts opening onto the surface beneath epithelium there is a connective tissue which contains the lymphoid tissue also called the malt and uh, beneath the lamina propria there is the two to three uh, circularly arranged layers of the smooth muscle cells called the muscularis mucosa so all these uh, three layers collectively form the mucosa that is epithelium the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosae after the mucosa the next layer is moderately dense connective tissue it contains blood vessels it contains nerves it contains lymphatics at at certain places in G- eye tract it also contains some tubular alveolar type of the glands next to the uh, submucosa is the muscularis externa and this muscularis externa generally consists of the two layers that is inner circularly arranged layer and outer longitudinally arranged layers of the smooth muscle cell with few ex- exceptions and these exceptions are the presence of the skeletal muscles in lower in upper third of the esophagus and also a third layer of the obliquely arranged smooth muscle cells in the stomach Uh, the nerve plexus which is present in between these two layer is the myenteric plexus or plexus of or bags outer to this is the serosa or adventitia which depends upon the presence of the uh, mesentery that is peritoneum whether it is covering the outer layer or not so outer if outer layer is covered by the peritoneum the outer layer is uh, serosa and if there is no peritoneum then the outer layer is called the adventitia so mucosa in detail the epithelium is generally simple canemner and for the purpose of absorption and secretion you can see this is the epithelium which is, which is generally simple columnar with large number of the goblet cells which are present these goblet cells are single uh, glandular cells secrete the mucus onto the surface Mm, uh, exception to this columnar epithelium uh, is esophagus and the lower part of the anal canal which are where the stratified squamous non keratinized type of epithelium is present this epithelium show numerous folds these epithelium show crypts at numerous places epithelium dips into the lamin- lamina propria and the form the crypts these crypts are the simple tubular glands so different modifications of epithelium generally it is simple columnar with exception of uh, stratified squamous in esophagus and lower part of anal canal also contain unicellular glands the goblet cells which are present in between uh, these simple columnar epithelial cells and then the crypts are the folds which are different modifications to this epithelium there may be villi uh, present in the epithelium in small intestine mucosa bears numerous finger like processes that project into the lumen so in this diagram you can appreciate the velvety appearance of the inner side of the uh, small intestine which show the numerous finger like processes and in this diagram you can also appreciate the villus which is present over here the glands are also present these are either unicellular as i have already told you uh, they are scattered among the cells of the lining epithelium in some parts of the git the compound tubular alveolar glands may be present in the submucosa as well 
Next to the epithelium is the lamina propria. This lamina propria is a loose connective tissue with high cellularity. It contains a large number of the uh, lymphoid tissue which is forming the gut associated lymphoid tissue. Uh, it contains blood vessels, it contains lymphatic vessels, it contains nerves. So in the small intestine, the core of villus is attached to the lamina propria where you can see a central lacteal capillary in the core of the villus as well. Uh, next is the muscularis mucosi. So muscularis mucosi is thin layer of the smooth muscle that separates the lamina propria with the submucosa. These are the inner circularly arranged muscles and outer longitudinally arranged muscles and contraction of the muscularis mucosi is important for local mixing of the intestinal contents. It changes the shape of mucosa that helps in absorption and secretion. So here the mucosa is completed. You can see this is the diagram of the esophagus. The epithelium is stratified squamous non-keratinized type and beneath epithelium there is the uh, lamina propria which is loose connective tissue and next to lamina propria is the muscularis mucosi these are circularly arranged smooth muscle cells Next, uh, second part uh, of the GI tract is the submucosa. This consists of moderately dense areolar tissue connects mucosa to the muscularis externa. Here you can appreciate this is the submucosa which is present just beneath the mucosa and uh, this mucosa permits some mobility of mucosa over the muscularis externa. It contains numerous blood vessels, lymphatics, nerve fibers and mesner's plexus. Also the tubular alveolar type of gland which are mucus secreting are present in the lower part of the esophagus as well as in the submucosa of the duodenum. These are two exceptions to the other parts of the GI tract where only the connective tissue elements are present in submucosa while in esophagus and in duodenum you can see the submucosal glands are also present. Next to the submucosa is the muscularis externa. You can appreciate these are the different layers of muscularis externa. It consists of smooth muscle cells all over the GIT but with few exceptions. And these exceptions are upper part of the esophagus which contains skeletal muscles. Generally these uh, smooth muscle cells in other parts of GIT they are arranged in uh, arrangement like inner circularly arranged fibers and outer longitudinal and in between these two layers the orbex plexus is present. But in case of the stomach another third layer is present which is the obliquely arranged smooth muscle cells. Inner circular layer at most of the places acting as the sphincter, for example, the pyloric sphincter, the internal anal sphincter, and the ileocecal valves. Third, uh, the fourth layer is the serosa or adventitia. So this is the uh, muscularis externa and outer to this is the serosa or adventitia. So it depends upon presence of the peritoneum. This peritoneum is a simple squamous epithelium where the outer covering layer of the GI tract is the peritoneum. The fourth layer is called serosa and where the peritoneum do not cover the outer part of the uh, tubular part of the GI tract, the outer layer is adventitia. Esophagus is also an exception because esophagus is usually covered by adventitia where it is present in the thoracic cavity while it enters into abdominal cavity a small part of it is covered by the peritoneum where it has serosa. So now we will discuss in detail the esophagus. This esophagus is a straight muscular tube. It extends from pharynx to the stomach in the abdomen. The mucosa is uh, formed by the stratified squamous non-keratinized type of epithelium. Beneath mucosa is the lamina propria. This lamina propria is loose connective tissue. It contains blood vessels, it contains nerves, it contains lymphatics and it contains large number of the lymphatic nodules forming the gut associated lymphatic tissue. Outer to this is the muscularis mucosi and this is thicker than other parts of GI tract and it consists of single layer of longitudinally running smooth muscle fibers and because of this muscularis mucosi usually 
the uh, lumen of the uh, mucosa uh, mucosa of the esophagus shows the star shaped appearance so next to the mucosa in the esophagus is the submucosa this is a wide layer of irregularly moderately dense connective tissue composed of bundles of collagen and elastic fibers due to elastic fiber the mucosa is thrown into fold hence the lumen of the of esophagus appears star shape it contains blood vessels and branched tubulo alveolar glands which are present in the submucosa these tubulo alveolar glands are given the name of the esophageal glands proper in addition to this these esophageal glands proper which are present uh, all over in the submucosa of the esophagus another type of glands are present in the at near the pyloric end of the esophagus in the lamina propria and these uh, glands uh, secretes the alkaline secretion to neutralize the acidity of the stomach contents so this is a histological section through esophagus and you can appreciate the epithelium this is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium thrown into fold forming a star shaped lumen because of the contraction of the smooth muscle cells of the muscularis mucosae beneath the epithelium is lamina propria then muscularis mucosae then the submucosa is present outer to submucosa is muscularis externa and then the adventitia so important point of for from identification of slide under microscope is that uh, you will see first you can identify the uh, stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium so when you will identify the stratified squamous non keratinized type of epithelium you will be thinking about different parts of the gi tract like oral cavity like lip like esophagus like last part of the anal canal so how will you differentiate Uh, different parts of the uh, GI tract. So in lip, you can see the uh, lip has uh, two, three surfaces, as I have already told you in the previous class. One is mucosal surface, and other side the true skin is present. In case of the tongue, you can see the specialized mucosa containing papilla are present. There are no papilla over here. Then in case of anal canal, the uh, true skin is also present over there at the last part. So in case of the esophagus, along with the stratified squamous epithelium, the lamina propria, the muscularis mucosa, mucosa in upper part, you can see the large number of the skeletal muscle fibers as well. So these are different identification points of the slides of esophagus under light microscopy. muscularis externa is arranged into two layers that is the circular layer which is inner and longitudinal layer which is outer so in this diagram you can appreciate these are the skeletal muscles so maybe the part taken from the upper part of the um, esophagus where skeletal muscles are present and these are the cross sections of the uh, longitudinal layer of the uh, muscularis externa so different types of muscle upper third having skeletal muscle middle third having both skeletal and smooth muscles which are mixed and lower third the purely smooth muscle cells outer to the muscularis externa in the esophagus is the serosa or the adventitia so it consists of loose areolar connective tissue which merges with the connective tissue of surrounding structures so again you can see the diagram you can revise from it this is mu uh, whole mucosa consist of epithelium then lamina propria and then muscularis mucosae next layer is the submucosa which is moderately dense connective tissue having tubulo alveolar gland called esophageal glands proper which empty their secretion via duct onto the surface of esophagus also appreciate the blood vessels the arteries and the veins in it and then is the muscularis externa and then is the serosa another uh, slide showing the cardio esophageal junction over here so you can appreciate the epithelium suddenly changes from stratified squamous non keratinized to simple columnar epithelium of the uh, cardiac part of the stomach also the structures associated with the stomach are also absent in this part 
so here we end our two days lecture these are the references the histology a text and atlas by michael h ross and medical histology by the laiku san siddiqui so till uh, now we complete our le uh, lecture today thank you all dear students for your attention and we will meet inshallah in the next class with the histology of the stomachs till then allah hafiz